Happy Friday, and welcome back to Brain Scratch. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. I had a message that came in over at lordenarts.com, and it immediately grabbed me by the heart. I'm sure many of you are going to feel the same way, and it leaves a very tough question about justice. Here's a little piece of that message. My name is Sidney Ebarb. I'm writing you hoping to get some help to get justice for my 19-year-old cousin, Libby Lewis, who was murdered. We recently went to trial in January of this year, and jurors sentenced him. But where is the justice when he cannot be found? And this is the life that was lost, Libby Lewis, someone who was looking to give back to her community in significant ways as she was pursuing a career in nursing and further education in nursing. So what is this message from Sydney about this missed justice? How did this happen? Was it just a combination of bad timing in terms of coronavirus and how, how that was affecting policies? Uh, perhaps there's some of that, but really, I think we got to take this story all the way back to day one to understand this. So we're going to do that on today's Brain Scratch. And of course, along the way, we're going to look to try to help raise exposure. And maybe it's not too late for justice to be served in this case. I really think it's not, but it's going to take an effort. It's going to take a lot of people caring and taking action. And I'm hoping that you're going to be one of those people with me here today. Starting at wikipedia.com, let's learn about where this takes place. This is in Sabine County in Texas. Sabine County is a county located on the central eastern border of the U.S. state of Texas. As of the 2020 census, its population was just under 10,000 people. You can see it's right on the east edge of Texas right there. Uh, let's go ahead and roll back the clock to, it was actually October 31st, 2020. Murder investigation underway in Sabine County. A murder investigation is underway in Sabine County and a suspect has been arrested and charged. This is honestly just from the outset. This is the kind of thing that we hope to see in these cases, that there is an immediate arrest. There's charges immediately filed. Um, there's information to help support a conviction. We have all those things in this case. But we've got something very big missing. And of course, right now, that is um, a, a fugitive. That's someone that's on the run. Back to the news article. The report said it began shortly after 5 a.m. That's on Saturday morning with what was initially believed to be a two vehicle crash on Highway 83 East near Farm to Market Road at about three miles east of Hemp Hill in an area known as Old Sabine Town. Emergency responders soon learned that it wasn't an accident. Kind of interesting to come up on a scene with two vehicles like that, and then you realize that it's actually a homicide. Um, I think it just amps the fear for me personally of just thinking, what happened around this? Do we have a car chase that's in this? Does she know that she's being hunted, essentially? Sabine County Sheriff Tom Maddox said a woman died from what appeared to be blunt force trauma and possibly a gunshot wound. And of course, we know from the letter we started today's episode with, the victim is 19-year-old Libby Lewis, as you can see in pictures here. And her accused killer here on the left, Matthew Hoy Edgar, 24 years old of Hemp Hill. From what I understand, uh, also a young father. Maddox said the suspect Edgar claimed that he had been stabbed, but once at a hospital emergency room, it was determined that he had not been stabbed. He was treated for minor injuries and released to the custody of deputies. According to Livy Lewis's Facebook page, she was a certified nurse's aide and worked at the Hemp Hill Care Center nursing home. Let's see what we can learn a little bit about Livy over at her Facebook page. It has been converted to a memorial page. We can see Remembering Livy Lewis is now the title of it with over 2,000 friends. Uh, for work, it does confirm certified nurse's aid at Hemp Hill Care Center. It's not showing a college, but from what I understand, she actually got a full ride scholarship to uh, SFA or Stephen F. Austin State University. And she was going to use that to pursue uh, her registered nurse's degree and hopefully someday become a nurse practitioner as well. Uh, in this article over at nerdyaddict.com, they have a write-up just a little bit more about Livy here, and I really appreciate that they took the time and, and wrote this up so beautifully. 
Libby Lewis had her entire life in front of her. Just two weeks before she was found murdered on the side of the road, she had purchased groceries for a random stranger who she saw counting items in her cart and counting her money. As a little girl, Libby was full of life. Her mother and family describe her as stubborn and independent, albeit with love and humor guiding her desire to live life to the fullest. When she was very young, Libby suffered from jaundice. She was born early, according to her mother. That didn't stop Libby from shining. By age four, she was reading. Many years later, she turned her love of nurturing to a focus on being a nurse. And of course, there's no one better, I think, to let us know a little bit more about Livy than her mother. Here's a piece of an interview. Livy was a selfless, amazing, beautiful, inside and out um, daughter, sister, granddaughter, friend, cousin. Um, she was good. She was good. She meant no one, no harm, no evil. She tried every day to do the best that she could do. And um, she just wanted to help people that could not help themselves. This world needed Libby Lewis. I think that's such a beautiful and touching statement. This world needed Libby Lewis. And unfortunately, she was taken from everyone. Uh, her memorial page here at Facebook actually has a lot of messages that are a bit different than you would expect for a memorial page at this point. Murder, Matthew Edgar Manhunt, um, video articles, news clippings, family members talking about what they're going through in this time where justice was supposed to be served and it was somehow missed. Just a lot of frustration on a page that really should be about honoring a beautiful person's life. But let's go ahead and continue over at KETK.com and get into some more of the details around the case and what, what went wrong here. A 24-year-old Hemp Hill man has been charged with murder and denied bond in the death of, 19, of a 19-year-old nurse's aide. The sheriff said Edgar was a former boyfriend of Lewis and that the two got into a fight that escalated into violence. The case remains under investigation, and there are no other suspects at this time. Some of the information I'm seeing is effectively they were at a party. I don't know if it was a Halloween party, but of course, this is around Halloween. It seems like she's actually killed, I think, on the morning of Halloween, but it's it's leading into that weekend. And from what I understand, the argument stemmed from her speaking to another guy, uh, something something like that. But let's go ahead and continue with the news articles over at KJAS.com. This is from March 19th, 2021. And as you see at the start of this story, like we're on the path to, to justice here. You know, okay, so we have his his bail initially denied. The Sabine County Grand Jury has indicted 24-year-old Matthew Hoy Edgar in the October 31st, 2020 murder of 19-year-old Libby Lewis. So we get it through the grand jury. We know that this thing's going to go to trial. The indictment alleges that Edgar intentionally and knowingly caused the death of Libby Heather Lewis by discharging a rifle and striking her about the neck and upper body. Edgar has remained jailed in Sabine County on a murder charge. Uh, what is worth noting here is we are now in March. He has remained jailed this whole time. That time gap here, we're over 90 days at this point. Um, that is going to be a little bit of a factor in kind of what goes wrong with this case. But Edgar, actually known to authorities from previous instances, another article from KJAS highlights, Matthew Hoy Edgar has been very well known to local law enforcement for several years. You may remember in December of 2014, KJAS News reported on three different law enforcement high-speed pursuits of Edgar on the same day. The last one ended with both Edgar and Hemp Hill police officer Pete Davis crashing. Officer Davis suffered a broken leg and had to undergo surgery while Edgar had back injuries. Um, seems like he's been a thorn in the side of law enforcement for a long time. And unfortunately, um, he has now traumatized a family as well. Uh, another article from April 7th, 2021, murder suspect released on bond despite DA's objection. And this is where we get into an explanation of things that just really have me shaking my head and I'm sure uh, have her family extremely confused and upset. Dis District Attorney Kevin Dutton objected, but bond was set at $50,000 by State District Judge Craig Mixon. Dutton said in a statement, 
Although I do not agree with the granting of the bond, I do believe the court was following the law and changes in the law. Dutton cited an order from Texas Governor Greg Abbott when he realized that the pandemic would cause delays to laboratories that were processing crime-related evidence and also that the illness potentially impacted the ability of a grand jury to convene. So according to what Dutton says, the governor signed an executive order which waived the 90-day period that the state had to bring forth an indictment. So you guys remember, I mean, everything is locked down, court processes ground to a halt. We do have him get indicted, but it doesn't happen within that initial 90-day window. Now, the governor, trying to account for that, says, hey, I'm going to write this executive order. It's going to say that's fine. But once again, according to Dutton, the Texas appellate court shot down that order, ruling that the governor could not do that. So it seems like just a terrible occurrence of timing with thinking that they had a protection against this. They were going by the book. This, this should be an open and closed case, essentially. And now they hit this strange condition where, uh, as I've seen it explained, they basically had two paths to take. Either they could release him with no bond at all, or they had to set bond that was something that could be reasonably attained by him. And I guess they had even kind of started kicking out dollar amounts. And he was like, no, that's too much. I wouldn't be able to afford that. Uh, it was part of these conditions of this executive order being shot down that this was the only two paths that they had at that point. Um, and it does seem kind of terrible. And we're going to bump into another fact, totally unforeseen. As I was looking at this case, I was like, no way. Uh, we're going to find another fact that really shows that that $50,000 amount probably wasn't right. It probably wasn't right from the start. If they were really trying to hit the condition of it had to be something, you know, that he could reasonably afford, um, because we're going to see that there was more money, much more money available than this, the $50,000. I don't know about Texas in particular. In most states, for a bond, you actually need to put up about 10% of what the total amount is. So for this $50,000 one, his family probably had to come up, I believe. And I don't know because Texas, the laws are a little bit different. It's kind of by area. But in general, like I said, it's 10%. So his family probably had to come up with about $5,000 to get him out on this charge. Think about that, guys. For a murder charge? When he's found at the scene, ah, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. This, this is just a really terrible order of events here. Back to a quote from Dutton. Although I'm upset with this setback, the case remains against the defendant and our office has requested an expedited trial date so that justice will be served. So they're trying to stay on track with this. Of course, once that happens, the community around Livy uh, erupts. We could see a post from a friend of hers named Ty Pearson here on Facebook. Libby Lewis touched so many people in her short time on this earth. She was the life of the party and the light of many of her friends' lives. October 31st, 2020, we awoke into our worst nightmare. Libby had passed away. Her murderer, Matthew Edgar, is a 24-year-old boy who has only served five months and was indicted for her murder. Today, he walked away with a $50,000 bond for first-degree murder. He took her life and can walk the streets of Sabine County for $50,000? Actually, like I mentioned, Ty, probably less. How can a judge let a man walk free for this? How can a town feel safe? How can Liv's family sleep at night knowing her killer is out living a regular life? Matthew Edgar, you took one of my best friends. Livy deserves justice. And on top of that, more people came out and they came out together to show their displeasure with this at a protest that was held at the courthouse. Uh, the Tuesday release of murder suspect Matthew Hoy Edgar sparked a protest in front of the Sabine County Courthouse in downtown Hemp Hill. Protesters were holding signs and voicing their displeasure that the 24-year-old was granted $50,000 in bail during a bond hearing. It also, again, mentions the expedited trial date. Here they say that they're looking to start it by Monday, July 12th. But as frequently happens with cases of this nature, it actually does get pushed back a little bit from there. Um, on top of having protests, we also have a candlelight vigil that's held. About 50 people gathered to take part in a candlelight vigil honoring Libby Lewis. Darcy Bass, Lewis's mother, said those who came out to pay respects to her daughter and their family 
are some of the most amazing, compassionate people. They support us, she said. Bass has started a petition to get Edgar's bond revoked and have him placed back in jail. She said, many people have signed the petition. So if all this isn't already nutty enough, then we get to this article, April 15th, 2021, about a week after he's been let out, jailed again. The recent release of accused murderer, Matthew Edgar, angered citizens to the point that they protested outside the Sabine County Courthouse. Now, the 24-year-old is back behind bars again, and Bond has been denied on two new criminal charges. Edgar was arrested on felony charges of assault of family or household member, impeding breathing, circulation, and criminal mischief. These charges are not in relation to Libby. These charges are in relation to what I believe is his ex-wife, and these charges are from the same day as the murder of Libby. And despite the fact that we see that Bond is denied here, um, it would actually at some point be granted to the tune of, I believe, $350,000. So they hit him with another amount, $350,000, and guess what? Somehow... His family pulls it together, brings that amount of money up, and he once again walks a free man. I almost felt like these other charges, I mean, you're going to see in the details as we go through them, absolutely, he, sh he should be charged for these. I mean, these are terrible. These are more kind of domestic violence related charges. Um, but I almost felt like, oh, okay, this is how they're going to you know, lock him back up and kind of keep him somewhere while they get this court trial process started. But somehow that bail amount comes much quicker. It is a higher amount. I'm kind of once again thinking because of the conversation they had with him previously about the 50,000, I believe it was 20,000 that they were actually initially talking about. And he was saying that was going to be too much. He probably wasn't going to be able to make that. So they set it at 50 and he makes it. So then he gets another one at $350,000 and somehow guys, he makes that as well and is once again walking around on the streets, despite the fact he has murdered one woman and attacked another. Allegedly. Not allegedly. I, I, I'll, I'll jump ahead in the story a little bit. Dude gets convicted, so uh, he's, he's murdered a woman. But at this point, allegedly from their perspective. Um, so what are the details of these new charges? A Sabine County grand jury handed two indictments to Edgar, both pertain to alleged behavior aimed at Montana Nicole Bockel. And that I believe is his ex-wife. Um, I believe also the mother of his, I don't know if it's more than one child, but at least one child. Regarding the criminal mischief charge, the indictment claims Edgar kicked and damaged the doors of Bockel's automobile, while the second indictment for assault family violence claims Edgar intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly caused bodily harm to Bockel by intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly impeding the normal breathing or circulation of the blood of the complainant by applying pressure to the throat or neck. Very troubling, troubling charges here. And if all this isn't enough, so he gets out somehow again, and we have the mother of Livy just trying to go to her local store, and who does she run into there? Now, just for a moment, guys, put yourselves in this situation. Think about this. Think about this story as we, we've looked at it so far already. Just forget that we actually do get a conviction in this. Just take it up to this point. He's found at the scene. He's arrested on site. He's held for several months. They let him out. New charges come in from the grand jury again. They hit him with a steeper bail amount. He gets out again. And you think this is the person that murdered your daughter and you go to a local store and you run into him. Would you guys be upset? Uh, that's exactly what happened. And unfortunately, it does lead to a little trouble for Libby's mother as well. Mother of deceased Libby Lewis encounters alleged murder suspect at store. This happened in December of 2021. According to Darcy Bass's Facebook post, she came into contact with Matthew Edgar 
She threw things and assaulted Edgar and damaged his vehicle. After the store encounter, Matthew Edgar filed charges on Darcy Bass for assault caused by bodily injury, retaliation, and criminal mischief. Um, I, I, just the fact that he would even think to press charges in that direction, knowing that he ended her daughter's life, like, who is this guy? Are you kidding me? The Sabine County Sheriff's Office confirms these charges against her. In this article, we do have a mention of the person that reached out to me, Sydney. Um, Sabine County Jail confirmed Darcy Bass turned herself in. And we have a quote here from Sydney. I don't feel like a grieving mother should have to be turning herself in. She shouldn't even have to be grieving. It was not natural causes that she's not here with us. And I just feel like they need to understand that if you were in her shoes, what would you have done? Sydney, I think you're, you're spot on. I, I can't imagine any of us that wouldn't have taken action in a moment like that. Um, and to be honest, yes, of course, you've already got these crazy, very tough emotions because of the loss of your daughter. But on top of that, this kind of slip up with the bail stuff, the amount being set too low, him being out, new charges filed, him looking like he's going to be locked back up. No, he's let out again. That whole process and everything that she has gone through in that, that it's an insane roller coaster ride is what it is. It, it really is. I don't know how you hold on to your sanity. I don't know how, I don't know. I, I just don't know how you stop um, this type of encounter from happening when this guy's all of a sudden, you know, he shows up at the store. She's at the store. Matthew Edgar's trial date for the accused murder is scheduled for January 2022. He pleaded not guilty. So we get to January 2022. Testimony underway. There's a lot more detail in this, but I'm going to spare you guys from it because it's not it doesn't really change the outcome at all. Just know that there was a ton of DNA information that they were trying to analyze. Some people were trying to push back on it. You know, his DNA should have been on this. Oh, it wasn't necessarily on that. The fact of the matter is this guy's found at the scene. Uh, and there's this strange thing where he kind of takes a trip in the middle before he gets found at the scene. He leaves some items, I think, at his mother's house, uh, which I'm sure she could corroborate. There's just there's all this movement and other information that very strongly supports that they have the right person here. But let's get into just a few of the details. A jury has been seated and testimony has begun in the Matthew Hoy Edgar murder trial in Sabine County. In their testimony, officers said that their investigation revealed that both Edgar and Lewis were at a party and an argument began over Lewis conversing with another man. The testimony also said that after everyone had left the party, Lewis was driving to Hemp Hill when Edgar caught up to her. So that first thing I was afraid of, that this is some kind of insane car chase situation. It looks like it went down like that, but I don't know if she knew she was being chased at that point. I, I, I would have to believe that uh, she would have kept driving. I don't believe this is a vehicle to vehicle shooting that has happened. Honestly, even with all the details I've looked into, I can't really tell you uh, much about the logistics of how this shooting came to happen. Uh, what I can tell you is it looks like it was a rifle that was used and it was a single shot. Investigators testified about finding Lewis dead, also finding Edgar in the same area, lying in the fetal position and bloody. Edgar was taken by ambulance to a hospital where he reportedly told them that he remembered drinking on a porch and awoke in the ambulance. So here we're hearing that he doesn't even have a complete memory. He's drinking on a porch and then he wakes up in the ambulance. So I don't know how he gets a story about saying that he thinks he's been stabbed by the time he gets to the hospital, but we know he does say that and they check him out and he has not been stabbed. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some more details over at KLTV.com. The state showed texts sent from Edgar's phone. I will watch y'all, take y'all with a smile on my face, said one of the messages. And then even maybe not more terrifying, uh, but at 3.34 a.m., there was another person in this text triangle that texted Edgar, Edgar and asked him where Lewis was, and he responded with the word dead. The state pointed out that Edgar would be the only person who would know Lewis was dead at that time, because we know from the news reports that effectively they don't find 
uh, her deceased on the side of the road until about 5 a.m. The state put together a timeline of events stating Edgar had used his truck when he shot Lewis. Then he took her phone and key fob and went to his mother's house. There, he got a different truck and was found at the scene, but he had dropped the key fob at his mother's place. So I, I, I can't explain any of this, but it is interesting that we have him touching down back at home, bringing a different vehicle back to the scene. Is that him trying to clean up evidence in some way to stage the scene? Um, certainly seems like it to me. And then dropping her key fob back at his mother's place really doesn't make sense. Because, I mean, just putting the basics of this case together, how does that key fob, we know she's using it because she's driving the car, then it's missing from the car, it's found at his mother's home. Like, I mean, this is not a hard case to put together even without DNA. But this is what's happening in the trial until we get to day three and the title of this article, No Show Defendant. A Sabine County jury found a Hemp Hill man guilty of murder as law enforcement continues to search for Matthew Edgar after he failed to show up at the third day of his trial. This picture is one of the last that they had. This is actually footage of him leaving the courthouse on the second day of trial. He is currently a fugitive, and the Sabine County Sheriff's Office, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and the Texas Parks and Wildlife are actively currently searching for him, said Joseph McDonough, an investigator with Sabine County Sheriff's Office. Law enforcement officers are on the ground searching the vicinity with canine officers, and a search helicopter and drones are assisting in the search by air. Here at KFDM.com, information starts coming into law enforcement, possible tips, some of that information gets shared a little bit publicly. The Sabine County Reporter newspaper says investigators thought he may be armed and locked in a relative's house, but they searched and didn't find him. A helicopter arrived with a sniper on board. Investigators say Edgar's family has cooperated fully. Officers are searching another residence and location. According to the newspaper, the latest word is that Edgar left his home this morning after 7 a.m. in camouflage and carrying a 270 rifle. One other interesting thing about this third day of court where he was coming and would have heard that he was guilty is apparently none of his family showed up that morning either. Uh, now, just to be clear here, the press is saying that they're cooperating fully, but does it appear that maybe they had some knowledge that he wasn't going to show up that morning? If all of a sudden the family that I'm assuming was there for the previous two days stops coming on day three? I don't know. Officers from the Sabine County Sheriff's Department searched two homes, one of which was said to be Edgar's home and another location on State Highway 83 in a wooded area next to where the murder of Lewis was alleged to have occurred. Um, oh, that's an interesting statement. The murder of Lewis was alleged to have occurred. I mean, I'm already worried, and I know that Livy's mother, I, I've, I've heard several interviews from her, and she keeps alluding to the fact that that scene was kind of staged as well. Um, is it possible that that whole scene out in the highway where the cars were found was staged, that the shooting could have happened somewhere else? Um, maybe. I don't know. I'm not seeing any information through the court process that kind of pushes in that direction. But like I said, I'm kind of hearing some things from the family that they certainly believe that there was aspects of that scene that were staged. Um, but that's a, that's just an interesting phrasing, phrasing that I didn't pick up on before. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with ktbs.com. Edgar 25 has been on the run since possibly Wednesday night. That's the last time the county probation office got a ping off Edgar's ankle bracelet. We're about to hear of a huge flaw in this whole, like if you had any comfort in, well, yeah, they, they let them out on bail, but then they have to wear an ankle bracelet and they're monitored. Okay. How does that ankle bracelet work? It's powered. How does it get recharged by the person wearing it in terms of the defense of the case? Uh, there's only one person that his legal team called up, and that was his probation officer, Kirby Humble, who testified that Edgar, after he made bond, he was to report once a week, and he did so. And when asked by District Attorney Kevin Dutton if Edgar ever failed to report or was ever disrespectful, Humble responded, no, not until the day before yesterday. 
Dutton asked her to explain her response. Humble replied, Wednesday at 11.37 p.m. was the last time Edgar's ankle monitor pinged. It showed 23% battery at that time. Essentially, he allowed the battery to die. It's it's just, it's amazing to me. It almost makes me think about like, during this court process, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I know he's free, but shouldn't there be some mechanism of maybe keeping tabs on him or just having someone kind of follow him around? Like, let him do whatever he wants to do. Don't interfere, but just kind of keep him monitored. I mean, through a murder trial. And by the way, obviously, this is not a complicated case. We're talking two days of testimony. And by day three, there's a, a conviction. Um, Like, what were the odds that this guy was going to flee? Like, did, was anyone thinking about that possibility before? I mean, I guess when you have him showing up to probation and keeping his ankle monitor charged, you don't think about that. But then the day before the conviction... Uh, it's really, really troubling. As of noon on Friday, he is still at large. As of today, he's still at large, guys. And it's 106 days, I believe, at this point. 106 days of freedom that this guy has that he shouldn't have. He should be sitting in jail. And we know we got the conviction even without him being there. But believe it or not, they actually pushed through and they even did the sentencing. District Attorney Kevin Dutton had asked jurors to give Edgar the maximum 99 years in prison, while his defense attorney, Roy Hughes, had asked the jury to give his client 50 years in prison. But the decision had to be unanimous. What did the jury come back with? Jury decides on 99 years. They gave him the max. And I have to wonder... I have to wonder if there was some aspect of this where he did that to himself. I'm pretty sure the jury would have noticed he wasn't in there during the sentencing phase. I'm pretty sure there would have been some dialogue that happened in the courtroom that might have tipped the jury off that, hey, this guy is on the run or isn't coming in. Do you guys think that that would alter your sentencing when it comes to something like this? If you were sitting on that jury and you hear this guy skipped out? Um, I think so. I think there's a pretty strong chance that sentence would have been less if he hadn't gone on the run like this, but he did. And essentially, you know, he's, he's got a life sentence, 99 year sentence, plus a $10,000 $10, fine. The jury made the decision without Edgar in the courtroom. A massive search has been underway since he failed to show up in court. Uh, Thursday night, witnesses spotted Matthew Edgar in the north end of Sabine County in the Shamrock Shores subdivision near Toledo Bend. He is on foot and wearing black pants, a cap, and camo shirt. Law enforcement officers asked citizens to lock their doors and remain aware. How is the family feeling during all this? Let's move on to KSLA.com. Libby's mother won't be satisfied until Edgar is behind bars. Matthew Edgar wasn't there to hear his punishment for the murder of Libby Lewis. The 99 years and $10,000 fine provide no satisfaction for Libby's mother, Darcy Bass. Quote, definitely stings a little bit that he's not here. They allow him enough range for him to run off and not be held accountable for his actions once again, she said moments after the sentencing was read. Bass said she is fearful and wonders if Edgar could harm her and her 15-year-old son. My daughter was murdered. Why would I not be now? He don't care nothing about me and my son, so why wouldn't he come after us, you know, she said. $50,000 bond, she repeated. That's the value of my daughter's life. There is something interesting, not interesting, disturbing in that also, to just look at the charges that were thrown at him um, and the order of the charges. You have a murder charge that comes in, he gets $50,000 bond, then you have domestic violence charges that came in, which I'm not, I mean, I'm, it's terrible. None of this should have occurred, but that victim is still alive. $350,000 bond. It just seems extremely backwards. Um, and once again, I just want to point out, we know that this is not a normal occurrence. This is because of that strange condition that happened um, with the executive order and the state pushing back on that. But it's just... Is it really easy to understand it even at that level? I mean, thinking about it from what the family's emotional landscape is around all this. 
Uh, KTRE.com reports, Sabine County Sheriff says ongoing search for convicted murderer has intensified and broadened. The Sabine County Sheriff's Office has completed follow-up investigation on 10 additional investigative leads regarding the whereabouts of Edgar, a press release noted. These additional leads were cleared and closed with no contact with Edgar. Several of the leads to date involve leads from East and Northeast Texas, as well as Western Louisiana. A previous press release stated that the Sabine County Sheriff's Office has checked out sightings of Edgar in Jasper and Orange Counties. Maddox reminded residents, you should not try to contact or try to stop Edgar if you see him. Um, I've also put those warnings in the description box down below. But if you do have information about him, we have several different contacts that you can use down there, including ones where you can remain anonymous. Of course, we do have the Sheriff's Office, the Sabine County Sheriff's Office. We've got a website you can go to over at usmarshals.gov forward slash tips. You can even email the Texas Rangers directly at rangers at dps.texas.gov. Uh, you can remain anonymous. Um, in particular, I saw it noted, you can remain anonymous if you're contacting the sheriff's office. Uh, I think for the web form, it'd be pretty easy to remain anonymous. But as I mentioned, if you are seeing him anywhere, do not interact with him. This is someone that I would have to assume could be extremely dangerous. You want to try to help this family, but you also have to be sure to protect yourself around a situation like this. Um, this is a person who obviously doesn't have much to lose at this point. So uh, that, that could be very unpredictable. By February 2nd, Sabine County Sheriff's Office put out another release. Uh, the Sabine County Sheriff's Office has completed upwards of 16 leads regarding the whereabouts of Edgar, which involved Western Louisiana parishes, North and East Texas counties, the greater Beaumont, Texas area, and locations in New Mexico and Missouri. There are additional leads pending coverage at this time, and all are currently being investigated. In this press release, they also basically say, this is the end of our regular updates on this until we have some information to share with you guys, and we'll be pushing that through uh, major media sources. And we do have other updates on this case, but unfortunately, uh, not the one that I think many of you viewers out there and myself are now waiting for. But there is a video clip here that I wanted to share with you guys uh, from Sydney to try to explain some of the tough feelings that she's dealing with in this as well. And I was mad because he don't get to make this decision. Like, you did what you did, you need to face that. Like, we had to sit in that courtroom and hear things and see things that just it hurt us it was reliving it all over again while sydney had the attention of the press she also drove home a very important point this mug shot of him from october is not what he looks like currently uh we know that we have this shot of him as he's leaving the courthouse but also keep in mind this is him clean cut shaven tight haircut he probably doesn't look like this currently either. Uh, here is another photo of him. This might be closer to uh, the, the person that we would be looking for right now. Hair probably grown out a little bit. Um, I, I do believe he wears a pretty strong uh, glasses prescription. So I think he's going to have the glasses as well. Um, I just really appreciate how Sydney was smart enough to do that. Like while she had the press's attention, she's like, hey, by the way, we got to make this note. You guys are circulating this picture of him. He doesn't look like that anymore. He's going to look like this or he's probably going to look like this. Over at KJAS.com, nearly two months after he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, Matthew Hoy Edgar remains on the run. KJAS News spoke to Sabine County Sheriff Tom Maddox on Thursday and asked him if there's any idea where Edgar might be hiding out. Sheriff Maddox said, Some days I think he may be close by, and other days I think he may be far away. We just simply don't know. When he is caught, Maddox said, whichever law enforcement agency captures him will deliver him directly to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Quote, he'll go straight to prison. He will not pass go. He will not collect $200. He'll go straight to prison. Just as straight as we can get him there, said Maddox. Uh, I'm wondering if there's actually going to be more charges thrown at him, but with a life sentence already, I just, I don't know what the effect of that would be outside of laying down court processes once again around this guy. Over at KLTV.com, mother of murder victim speaks out as killer still on the run. Quote, this is a dangerous person. 
the most dangerous person in our area and they don't have a lot of people to look over. They should have done a better job of looking after this one, she said. Never in a million years would I think that I, it would end up like this, that someone would commit this heinous crime and be able to walk off. Bass says her next step is to put up flyers around the county to serve as a reminder that Edgar is still out there. I want to ask you all to help us with that. Share this video in Texas, in Louisiana. Quite honestly, he could be on the run even in, outside of a, a broader area than that. Um, but please do that. Also, I'm going to be posting on Twitter. Uh, so please go to Twitter, hit retweet on some of the posts that I'm going to do around this case. We need to make sure that this guy's face is out there and that people know who they might be interacting with, who they might be dealing with. Back to another quote from Darcy. He can't run from God, and I believe in him. He will make sure justice will be served. If not in this lifetime, then in the next. I just ask people if they see him, report it to police. And Darcy, I truly hope we're not looking at a situation where you don't see justice in this lifetime. Uh, we're like this is the brink of justice at this point. The conviction is there. The sentence is there. Interestingly, um, I do have an interview with Darcy here. I'm going to include that in the links down below. I'm not going to run the whole thing for you guys here. Um, but she's saying that it seems like his legal team is starting to file some types of appeals processes. I don't know how you could do any of that in this situation where we have him on the run. Um, but according to this particular interview with her, she says that that's happening. Um, which of course, if he has a life sentence, I mean, that will probably be the focus of the rest of his life. We'll just be trying to get from appeals process to appeals process, doing anything he can to try to shave off any of the time in prison that, that he was sentenced to. But when it comes to what Darcy really wants out of all this, we have to look over at kdhnews.com. Quote, I would rather have the truth than any penalties or years. I would rather him sit down and tell me what happened so I know what happened to my daughter. Bass says that she wants her daughter to be remembered as someone who was persistent in doing good, wasn't judgmental to others, and would help someone change their life at any time. Bass said that Lewis constantly reminded others that you could do and be anything that you want to be. I want us to always remember to throw up the L for Livy Lewis, said Bass. Long live Livy Lewis. And Sydney her cousin uh, told me this same story in her initial message to me, but I just wanted to share this with you guys. Libby Lewis was an honor student, a daughter, and a light to many lives throughout Southeast Texas and Southwest Louisiana. Libby made a video for a school project a few hours before she was murdered, where she said, quote, I always knew if I could graduate high school and go to college and things like that, I could help my family. Based on the stories I'm hearing, this is someone that was looking to help more than just her family, or this is someone that considers her community, the world around her, her family. And that's the type of person that we're missing here today. Uh, over at dailynewsandmore.com, very simple in the title, where is Matthew Edgar? This is posted earlier this week. Like I mentioned, I think we're at 106 days now that he's been on the run. The Sabine County Sheriff's Office continues to search and respond to tips, but 25-year-old Matthew Hoy Edgar remains on the run. The U.S. Marshal Service and Texas Rangers continue to assist in capturing the fugitive, and that's why I've added all their contact information down below as well. And finally, uh, this is the image that I think I'm going to be circulating on social media. I'm gonna have a link to it right near the top of the description box down below. Grab a copy of this image. Send it around, please. We This this is the one that I think might help us get this job done. Um, so please do that. I did ask Sydney about the charges against Darcy for the incident that happened at the convenience store. Um, and apparently those charges are still pending. Now, I don't know if there's a court date that's coming up for it. I would have to assume that what's going to happen is the first court date for it is going to come up. Uh, they're going to have the person that is pressing the charges not show up to that court date. I would think there's probably a pretty good chance that those charges are going to be dropped when that happens. But as of right now, those charges are kind of still at play as well. 
So everyone, just for one moment, uh, I know I've asked you to do this in this video, but really think about the reality of a situation like this, so close to justice and literally overnight it disappears as this guy just walks off. Please find it in your hearts to help this family. Please share this video in Texas, Louisiana, any surrounding states in that area. And let's give this family another shot at the justice that they've already earned and they should be seeing served. I mean, they, they didn't get to read their victim impact statements. They didn't get to see him locked up and walked up out, walked out of that courtroom. There's just, there's a lot of things, um, that it, it's obviously not going to bring back Livy, but there's a lot of things that can help them in their journeys as they're trying to process all this, that they've literally been robbed of by the, all of this. So, uh, I'm truly hoping for the best outcome in this. And of course, Sydney, you know, you have a friend here, please keep me updated on what's going on with this. Uh, speaking of friends, we can't do this without your guys' support. We always run limited commercials, maybe one at the start, maybe one at the end, and that's it. You never have our um, features interrupted here with commercial interruptions. We can only do that because of amazing supporters like you guys. So a big thank you to new patrons, Kimmer Moore, the certified Roracle, and Karen Barish. On top of that, a thank you to Gray White for increasing his pledge. If you want to help us and our work here at the channel, please visit lordandarts.com where you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or buy us a coffee like Shauna Blackwood recently did. We appreciate all your help and support as we look to help these families in these tough situations. I never thought I'd bump into a case like this, guys. This is a first for me. Um, these situations are crazy and these families need support. We really appreciate you allowing us to be there for them. So thank you guys so much. Stay safe. Take care. We'll see you back here on Monday with a brand new episode of Case Cracked right here on the Lord and Arts channel.